everyone. In the last installment, we told you about the U.S. check tree. Today, we'll focus on the Imperial Japanese Navy, number one enemy for the U.S. Navy. Full ahead. Between World War I and World War II, two major treaties were signed, the Washington Naval Treaty and the London Naval Treaty. These treaties significantly limited naval construction. In the first place, they placed limits on the maximum displacement of ships and on gun caliber. The nations that signed the treaties had to find new ways of enhancing their fleets. In the 1920s and 1930s, the Japanese Navy was relentlessly preparing for war against its powerful rival, the U.S. Navy. Japanese naval engineers came up with the concept of qualitative superiority. Assuming that in the event of war, they might not be able to outnumber the enemy, the Japanese tried to equip every warship with as much weaponry as they could. Japanese ships can be divided into two types. Some ships, such as battleships, had heavy armament and big guns. Other ships, such as destroyers and cruisers, had torpedoes, good speed and maneuverability. Let's have a look at the Japanese ship classes separately and compare them with their American counterparts. Starting with destroyers. Japanese destroyers were designed for aggressive tactics. They have relatively weak anti-aircraft guns and primary armament guns that cannot ensure victory in battles against American destroyers of the same tier. But their torpedo armament is very powerful. Torpedoes. Torpedoes are a completely different story. On average, torpedoes of most navies had a maximum range of about 10 kilometers. Whereas Japanese torpedoes could travel far longer distances, of up to 20 kilometers. That's comparable to the range of primary armament guns. Destroyers in the top third of the Japanese tech tree will be equipped with the famous long lens torpedoes. These torpedoes have a diameter of 610 millimeters, used compressed oxygen in their propulsion, and were the most powerful torpedoes of World War II. Japanese cruisers carried torpedoes too. While the Americans almost gave up on torpedoes on their cruisers, the Japanese tried to use cruisers' displacement to the full. As a result, they packed their cruisers with weapons, often at the expense of the ship's armor, anti-aircraft defense, and sailors' living conditions. But it was worth it. Japanese cruisers dominated the Pacific. If you ask me which class is the most powerful in the Japanese fleet, I would say cruisers. Heavy guns combined with torpedoes is a deadly threat to the enemy. And they're very beautiful, too. My favorite cruiser is Mogami, especially when she carries 152mm guns. Her 15 guns were divided between five triple turrets. Imagine the hail of fire she will unleash on her adversary. Next come aircraft carriers. In the history of naval warfare, there were some dramatic duels between Japanese aircraft carriers and their American counterparts. Training the aviators for Japanese aircraft carriers took a considerable amount of time and wasn't easy. After the Japanese lost most of their aces in 1941 and 1942, the Imperial Japanese Navy began to lose ground. In contrast to reality, Japanese aircraft carriers in World of Warships won't be inferior to their American counterparts. American aircraft carriers have more powerful anti-aircraft guns and boast better survivability, whereas their Japanese counterparts can operate more squadrons. This will add a certain variety to the gameplay. From the battleships of World War I to the greatest ever battleship, 
The legendary Yamato, the battleships of the Imperial Japanese Navy, were among the best warships of their time. Yamato is positively a top choice when you need to hit heavy armored ships. Yamato is a top choice when you need to cause maximum damage. Yamato is heavily armored. Yamato also has the biggest immunity zone compared to other ships in the game, and vice versa. Any ship in World of Warships has the smallest immunity zone when it's under fire from Yamato's guns. As a matter of fact, almost the only adversary a Yamato needs to worry about in World of Warships is another Yamato. You can defeat a Yamato with torpedoes, you can sink her with bomber attacks, and you can hit or destroy her with heavy artillery fire. But if you're going to try any of those, remember that it will take lots of time. During this time, the team that has Yamato on their side can do a lot. The Japanese tech tree is based on the same principle as the American tech tree. Whatever the ship class, when a player moves to the next tier, they get a new, more advanced ship. For instance, you cannot move to tier 3 without having researched the previous two tiers. You should consistently earn experience and research every ship of every tier, enhancing the ship's performance capabilities and armament. If we are to compare classes, it should be done on a ship by ship ship bases. The Japanese best-in-class destroyer Shimagazi carries 15 torpedo tubes and triple mounts. At the time of World War II, this was the most powerful torpedo armament ever used on destroyers. One would think it's as good as it gets. But then there's light cruiser Kitakami. Among other weaponry, she carries 10 quadrupled torpedo tubes loaded with the famous long lances. In theory, this cruiser can fire 40 torpedoes simultaneously. In reality, Kitakami's torpedo salvo just wipes the sea clean of enemies. It may sound a bit subjective, but when it comes to defining the strategy for Japanese ships, we can sum it up as hit and run. You'd better not leave Japanese warships unattended in a battle. Or it could lead to serious trouble. Usually they fall prey to enemy aircraft, as their weak anti-aircraft guns leave them no chance of survival. This goes for any ship class, whether it's a battleship, a cruiser, or a destroyer. Try to use team tactics. Try to cause the maximum damage possible with sudden attacks. And try to avoid exchanging gunfire for long periods of time. Make a strike, launch torpedoes, fire a few salvos with your main guns, and fall back as quickly as possible. You can hide behind islands or release a smoke screen and get out of direct visual range. These are the most successful military tactics for Japanese warships. The Japanese are experts in surprise attacks. Use them. To understand and experience the play style of Japanese warships firsthand, you should begin with training battles and try out all of the ship classes, destroyers, cruisers, powerful battleships, and aircraft carriers. As soon as you get the hang of the overall approach, you can settle on the Japanese ship class that suits you best. When I want to play at a steady pace, I choose a battleship. Battleships are generally heavily armored and carry powerful guns. You can cause significant damage and survive a long time. When I want intense gameplay, I settle on a destroyer. For now, Japanese destroyers are the swiftest warships in the game. At the same time, they carry powerful torpedo armament. They're capable of causing major mayhem behind enemy lines. If I choose Japanese cruisers, I need to remember that, unlike American cruisers, they always carry torpedoes. This makes their gameplay quite unique. Now it's not only about firing guns, it's also about positioning. Attack your enemy with torpedoes, fire a few salvos, and enjoy the outcome. Explore your ships. They are very exciting. Japanese warships are quite unique. They have a special play style. Know the strengths of your Japanese ships. Make use of them and win your battles. Good luck.